Profiling a JVM should be as easy as possible, and JProfiler goes to great lengths to provide all sorts of hassle-free ways to start profiling. On the local machine, we've become used to simply selecting a JVM from a list of running JVMs and start profiling with a single click. Since JProfiler 10, it's possible to do the same thing for a JVM that's running on a remote machine. In a previous screencast, I explained how to set up a direct network connection to the profile JVM by first extracting the JProfiler archive on the remote machine, then executing the JP enable common line utility to prepare the JVM for profiling. That will give you a port that you can enter here, and then you can start profiling by directly connecting to the profiling agent. Starting with JProfiler 10, it's possible to avoid doing any of these things. The only thing you need is an SSH connection, and JProfiler has SSH functionality built in, so you can configure it directly in JProfiler. There's two different ways to set up SSH tunnels, either a multi-hop SSH tunnel or a direct SSH connection. You just provide the username and the host name and an authentication method and you could manually specify the profiling port if you had already used JP Enable on the remote side. But here we want to discover the running JVM, so we leave this option selected. When we start the attach process, a lot of things are happening in the background. JProfiler determines if a profiling agent is already cached on the remote side. If not, it downloads a suitable profiling agent to your local machine, uploads it to the remote machine, and uses the profiling agent to enumerate the running JVMs and display them in the JProfiler UI. One thing that's important to understand about attach functionality is that you can only attach to a JVM that has been started as the same user, in this case as the SSH login user. And as you can see here, there are no such JVMs. And this helpful notice down here reminds us that the JVMs we are interested in may have been started by a different user. And that's where this switch user button comes into play. We can now enter credentials to use su or sudo to become a different user. And in this case, I've started the JVMs as root and there's no password, so I click on OK and there's lots of JVMs listed now. The JVMs with a red background cannot be profiled because they're being monitored by Perfino, and I could not profile them without releasing them in Perfino first. But I could profile the Perfino service here, for example. I now have two options. I could either take a low overhead heap dump that does not involve loading a profiling agent in the JVM. It uses the internal HPROF mechanism, saves the HPROF snapshot to disk, transfers it to your local machine, and opens it directly in JProfiler. Or we go for full profiling and click on the Open button here. The connection is being established. We still have to configure the profiling settings. And when using attach functionality, it's always a good idea to use sampling in order to avoid excessive reinstrumentation of classes. We accept all default settings in the session startup dialog and start the profiling session. And after some preparations by the profiling agent, profiling data is shown. Remember that we did not install anything on the remote side just with your local JProfiler installation and the appropriate SSH credentials. You can profile JVMs anywhere with zero configuration on the remote side. 